Hey. No sé si me estén viendo. Espero que sí. Pero bueno. Um, no sé todavía cómo poner fondos bonitos como de y los demás. Espero aprender en el, en el camino. Pero bueno, me presento. Yo soy Mesli. Eh, en el mundo del derby juego con Bordel Zombie. Y pues me da mucho gusto estar aquí para poderles presentar un contenido padre. Creo que este es parte de nuestro... Un, un proyecto muy importante para nosotros porque pues si bien no podemos estar juntos en la pista, pues sí podemos eh, estar conectados, ¿no? Podemos estar presentes y compartir cosas que nos gustan, aunque no sea patinando, ¿ok? Entonces, bueno, este segmento se llama Shit You Didn't Know About y es para compartir un poco acerca de, eh, pues, datos interesantes, cosas que nosotros nos pueden llegar a ser útiles y... Pues, mmm, me gustaría primero que nada comentarles que, pues, este programa va a ser en la mayoría de las, de las ocasiones en inglés. Puede que sea bilingüe hasta cierto punto, pero, pues, lo mío, lo mío es el inglés, entonces está padre porque es una manera en la que nosotros podemos practicarlo un poquito para todos los que estén interesados, para todos los que tengan ganas como de aprender un poco sobre esto y sobre algunos temas diferentes, pues están, sean bienvenidos, ¿sale? Entonces, este primer programa va a ser Shit You Didn't Know About Addictions, ¿ok? So, in many circumstances, an addiction is formed in response to some traumatic event in a person's life. And they usually turn to substance abuse to dull the pain. Okay, while drugs and alcohol are incredibly common, some people find solace in more unconventional areas. These things pay off with senses and reward. That reward, though, becomes something you want more and more over time. Okay, so like any addiction, you have this presence of something that makes you feel good. Okay, sometimes we have trouble, we have pain, we have things that we don't know how to deal with. So addictions become this um, escape we have. Commonly, we use substances, okay? Like alcohol, like drugs, like um, tea, for example, okay? But we have here some examples of addictions that are not very related to uh, common places, okay? We have some addictions that we may be not very eager to recognize even in ourselves, okay? For example, I have had an addiction since I was like three years old to bite my nails, okay? But this addiction um, is not very noticeable for people because people think that it's only related to nervousness or anxiety like normal levels of anxiety, and it's not true. It's related to some um, pathology that we may not think that exists, or we may not be even aware that it exists, okay? Addictive substances are so hard to put down be because using them gives your brain a shot of dopamine, okay? Which is a chemical messenger and ne neurotransmitter that can affect mood. Okay, some of you, maybe some of you know this dopamine effect that is um, related to, to happiness, okay, to how we feel when we're happy, to we know when, for example, when we see friends, when we do exercise, when we are out in the beach or at the party, okay, we know that we're happy, we're feeling very, very good, okay. So that dopamine effect can be replicated by substances, okay? So there's biological reasons for this to happen in your brain. It's to ensure health, okay? Life-sustaining behaviors like eating, 
uh, are related also to happiness okay so sometimes when we are having a good time with our friends or when we are out doing something we like we feel like eating we feel like hydrating we feel like uh, some things that are positive for ourselves okay what happens when you are in the opposite side when you're sad normally you don't get hungry you don't get sleepy you sometimes are doing things that are not very healthy okay so that is related to dopamine okay so alcohol during along with other mood altering drugs replicate this pleasure and reward but do so even more efficiently and intensely okay so for example it's not only alcohol when we have like certain drugs like for example weed when we are having like a joint we are feeling um this happiness or there's quietness and peacefulness more 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 um in a more efficient way than when than we do when we are exercising for example because dopamine is not very um it's not as fast when we are doing something healthy okay so some substances have this effect very quickly and very very um like intensely okay so the artificial high delivered makes it difficult to stop using the substance over time when you get used to it that is why you need more okay so that is what causes an addiction okay so uh the point is that it's not only not is the only way to get a dopamine okay so the definition of addiction seems to be changing but is your compulsion to check your smartphone for example the same as an addiction to alcohol probably yes okay why because this dopamine effect with this peaceful happiness effect that we have with substances or with healthy habits can be very very uh, similar to the effect we have with technology okay this is funny for me to say because I'm broadcasting right now <laughs> and I, I want everybody to see it, but it's true. It's very important because um, it's important to recognize because when we are um, over and over checking our phone or trying to get people to get to know us or to get connected to us through technology, that can cause this pleasure or this sense of peacefulness uh, that we are looking for in other substances but in a healthier way but is it really healthy is it really healthy to be checking your phone all the time is it really healthy to be craving for attention all the time to different types of social media i don't know brain scans show similar spots to light up the reward sentence are the brain when someone is addicted to something people be a substance or be a behavior people can really get damaged to their personal life okay it's not only you know like a disease or something that gets you to a mental health problem it's not only that it's something that is related to social uh, isolation to this this distorted vision of yourself okay so an addiction can be practically everything that makes us feel good even exercise so uh, many people with strange addictions don't admit them because their experiences are not typical they're afraid that people will view them as abnormal or mentally unstable especially since few people understand addiction or how know how to help even so, people with strange addictions are all around us, okay? We may even have a strange addiction with not being completely aware of. Why? Because we um, are socially instructed to know that only... <laughs> Thank you, Day. <laughs> um, that only substances like alcohol or drugs or, you know, illegal stuff are only... The, the only ones that are related to addiction or that can lead us to addiction okay but it's not true it, it can be 
literally anything okay so i'm going to show you a little bit of um research about the weirdest addictions i found okay what are you addicted to normal things normal things i mean cigarettes or um weed or alcohol or something or weird things are you addicted to video games are you addicted to exercising are you addicted to um having toxic relationships <laughs> that can be an addiction too okay so uh, what do you feel when you crave that addiction what do you feel when you like exactly addiction to roller derby yes Sophie. we can we can have that because it makes us feel good because it makes us try to escape from our world and that can lead to a problem okay so the word addiction is derived from a latin term enslaved by i just want to let you know that i really love linguistics and i really want to know the you know the the source of every word i want to know everything about words because that's my job and i really like it <laughs> okay so the word addiction is derived from a latin term enslaved by okay so we're practically enslaved by something or someone maybe 13 is the every average age children experiment with drugs okay so um the first time we take drugs we are um you know amazed by it because it makes us feel like that is something that we must embrace okay but it can lead to some very very serious problems okay alcohol is the most abused substance and the most legal one why i think it's something related to nature a lot of other mammals have this very um attraction very weird attraction to alcohol i don't know if it has to do with um the substance itself or probably because it has a little bit of toxic lining on our brain yes kevin we can also have addiction to video games because they make us feel like we're escaping our world right so um alcohol it, it's a very very uh, important issue i think we are going to have an episode only on alcohol because it was, it's a wide range of information we have there and it's a very very legal drug because we all need it at a certain point i don't know why even you know like elephants or koalas or other animals they have this um at, they have these attractions for alcohol okay so um an addiction can after you alter uh, sorry your brain structure how every chemical reaction your brain has can you know like reset your brain how i'm not really sure i'm going to look for it but i know that for example people with depression or people with um other kinds of uh, mental uh, illnesses have different structure in your in their brain okay um, for example people with autism or people with alzheimer's for example they have a different structure we all have you know the same abilities but some people have a wider or um or a very reduced you know areas so all brain structures can be affected not only by you know naturally produced dopamine or serotonin but also that in the influence of that artificial um instance like drugs or addictions okay so one of the strangest addictions i found was drinking urine nice this uh, 53 year old lady claims she had a urine drinking addiction for four years but wait it gets weirder she will drink her from her nose how do you drink something from your nose do you know <laughs> 
Well, I I have seen people doing really weird things, like um, sniffing, you know, cinnamon or something like that, or putting a condom in their noses and blow it, you know, from their mouths. But drinking from your nose has to have like a really, you know, thrilling effect. Like you are going to die, literally, because you can drown. But it's not only like that you're drowning, you're drowning from your urine. What the hell is going on with that lady? Okay. Uh, eating mattresses. Eating mattresses is a very weird addiction. You will drink some cruises urine. I will probably drink my own piss if I had to, you know? Like if I were in a very bad situation when I had no choice, probably. That would be the only thing. But you know, drinking your earring from your nose. That is batshit crazy. Okay, eating mattresses. Eating mattresses is a very, very weird um, addiction. But I actually knew a, a girl who did it, you know, like um, she had an eating disorder. So that uh, girl thought that it would be, you know, somehow, um, you know, no calories <laughs> from eating something that wasn't food. But uh, I think it, it had made sense, you know, for a person with eating disorder, but probably I wouldn't do it uh, at all. I heard that when people are in extreme conditions, like when they have an accident and they are completely isolated, they eat like several um, things that they found, like makeup or clothing or <laughs> things like that. But mattresses, I think it, first of all, it has to taste really horrible because it, it has to be really dry. And second of all, uh, it has to feel really bad in your stomach. That girl I met that had that eating disorder and used to eat her own couch, she told me that um, it was something really bad for her stomach and it was a, a really bad sensation. But, you know, it was worth it because she wasn't getting any calories from it. So, the more you know, right? <laughs> Uh, just as there are people who seek happiness through love and recipro reciprocated affection, there are also those who find a certain pleasure in feeling rejected, okay? Uh, it's not just to say, you know, like, um, I feel better by myself and I don't want to meet anyone and I don't want to see anyone and I'm a, you know, hermitage. It's not only that. It's like getting actual pleasure from it. Like, you know, being... Um, the the outcast or being, uh, you know, getting even molested by people, like you get bullying or something. There are people that actually like to do that, okay? So, um, talking about addictions that has to do with normal, normally seen as pain <laughs> or seen as a you know things that you don't want in your life we have getting stung by bees okay so there are actual people that are addicted to getting stung by bees i know people that are completely the opposite that they have like a phobia of bees because they don't want to get stung but you know getting stung is not something pleasurable <laughs> it's not something that you see and, and say, wow, this is what I want to do every day of my life. But there are actual people that like to do that, that enjoy it. I've heard that it, it's like, it's more like a sexual thing. It's like a, a kinky stuff because people like to feel the insects attract, attracted to them, you know? I've heard that it's some kind of fetish, I think, that uh, people like insects to walk around on their bodies or 
like sting them um because the pain or you know the sensation of feeling swollen and hurt <laughs> give them you know pleasure i think it's a sexual stuff <laughs> uh, mitch is a shopping addict actually i'm going to talk about that in a little bit okay so before uh, we have something weird that is eating toilet paper. That is also a little bit um, disgusting, but I think that is a, um, a little bit m more common than the things we have talked about because a lot of people like eating paper in general. Not specifically toilet paper, but you know, I think toilet paper will be, you know, the softest <laughs> to chew and to swallow. Because I cannot imagine it in, you know, cardboard or things like that. But probably you have, like when you get like a hamburger, when they're wrapped up in, you know, paper and you probably just chew it and didn't know, didn't even know. But there are actual people that like to eat toilet paper. And there is, <laughs> there is this um, disease and that people that get actual surgeries because not all toilet papers or not all, you know, paper in general are, um, you know, digestible, <laughs> digestible. So, yeah, there's people that like to do that. I hope that that toilet paper is clean. Okay. So, eat in the ashes of that people. Yeah, the more you know, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what to say about this because eating ashes per se is bad enough because it's like eating dirt but you know without being I, I don't know I don't know how to explain this uh, eating that ashes can be bad enough because you can actually choke so I think the thrill of doing that might be like feeling like you're choking or feeling like oh my god i'm i'm doing this really really forbidden and weird stuff but you know ashes of dead people that can be a hundred times weirder why because you're not only eating dirt you're eating ashes and not only ashes it could be the ashes of someone you love and it, it, I, yes it's a little bit romantic but it can actually um, have a bad consequence okay it's not only morally morally questionable <laughs> it is a little bit bad for your health um there's a a, a lady that couldn't stop eating her dead husband's ashes, okay? As for how it began, she said she took the taste when she was moving the ashes to a special urn. And when some spills, she licked the ashes of her finger. <laughs> Not only does that she eat ashes, but she also takes them everywhere. Cassie admitted to bringing the urn with her to the grocery store or even shopping, okay? Uh, Carrying the ashes of someone you love is not that uncommon. I've heard that a lot. And I wouldn't do it, but I think it's um, probably something you need to do when you have this uh, pain of recently losing someone. But, you know, accidentally eating them? I think uh, what I have heard about this... Uh, um, things or cannibalism <laughs> uh, or from what I know of experiences of actual cannibals that the thrill is not you know eating or the taste or something like that the thrill is more about um, thinking or knowing that the person you love or the person that is right there death is now part of you okay so um, I think it's quite romantic if you think about it, but as to consider it an addiction, okay, if she eats her husband's ashes whole, 
that will be an experience but an addiction could be like for instance if you happen to go to a, a cemetery or actual urns and steal other people's bodies and eat it that will be an addiction i don't know it i, I don't consider this an addiction i consider it a very weird experience okay <laughs> snorting baby powder oh my god you know snorting things is not healthy friends i'm sorry but somebody has to tell you um a, a lady claims that she needs her daily dose of powder in order to function okay so <sighs> i know people that use this to eat you know like chalkboard or something chalk because they need magnesium and sometimes your body makes you think you know what we're craving this and it's a good idea probably but mm, no human meat <laughs> okay i i've heard that is tasty but you know the problem is how to get it right so uh powders and things that go up to your nose mm, and probably not a good idea if they're not um <laughs> air <laughs> i don't know your your nose is made for air people no this is not gonna take you good places okay eating glass this is very common this is indeed an addiction okay a uh, person told the a uh, show that he let champagne glasses okay so no any kind of glasses not a window a champagne glass okay uh, and white glasses light bulbs and any thinner type of glass i think i understand that one because when i'm drinking water i like to you know taste the glass like licking it i don't know why i it feels like you're um licking something pure <laughs> i don't know i really like glass but i wouldn't do it like so much as swallowing it because um i don't know i think it can be harmful for your stomach probably but he has as his addition started he said he came across the act of eating glass in a book he was reading and he decided to try it he also admits he mostly does it for the attention it gains for others okay so he do he does it for the show right so if i did it to you know eating glass for attention the problem is bigger than glass <laughs> but you know um, I understand the thrill of it. I understand that it, it tastes good because it does. You have to admit it when you, you know, like a lick a glass of water. It tastes awesome. But, you know, I, I understand the thrill of it because it, it can kill you at any time. But I don't know. And how about some other addictions we have? develop here in pandemic as mitch was saying like online shopping is one of the addiction i have right now and i have to admit it to you guys because it it is possibly the only thing i can get thrills from because i cannot play because i cannot uh, roller skate because i cannot see my friends so i think i get thrilled by ordering things online that are not very necessary that i don't even have the money to get but i don't care i have to buy it <laughs> uh, have i ever eaten something considered weird um probably you know like little pieces of a wall <laughs> you know like a uh, little pieces of brick because my sister convinced me that it tastes like chocolate so i had to try it and it obviously didn't taste like chocolate but it was tasty for me so sometimes when i get to a wall that is like um with i don't know how it is called even in spanish so when i get to to a wall that is uh you know like falling a little bit i take little pieces of the wall and I eat it 
So I don't know. Tell me, Kevin, have you ever eaten something that is considered to be weird? Or anybody <laughs> that is watching the show and wants to share some strange eating habits? That will be interesting. So how do we get, um, you know, this behavior cure? I think that, first of all, you cannot cure, you chew on your finger. I actually do it too. And now, normally I use uh, nails, acrylic nails, so I don't do it. Most of you know that I love my nails. But right now I have a mess in my life, so I do this to my finger. And yes, it is an addiction because it is the only way you can <laughs> express your stress, I think. <laughs> but how do we get rid of these behaviors? First of all, as some of you may know, the the people that are here that are teachers and know a little bit of this um, are sure that we cannot change people's behaviors just like that. Okay? There has to be an instruction. It has to be some um, process that people can understand why their behavior is affecting them. Because how can we, you know, go to this place with the ladies eating her husband's ashes and tell her, you know, that is wrong. Morally or socially, it's probably weird, but it's not wrong because it's making it feel good. <laughs> so how do we convince people that their behavior is affecting them in some way. Well, that is a very large, um, troubling, you know, process. But some therapy includes hypnosis. Hypnosis is a very controversial activity because um, sometimes people, you know, get to your head and may even put things artificially where they're not belong. So when you were little Sophie, you ate and, but it wasn't an addiction, it was curiosity. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think ants are very, you know, high in protein. So I think it was good because it was good for you. But some people eat ants, you know, cooked, but <laughs> being live it was it was curiosity and i think it was very good i would i would have loved to see you you know little and eating ants and kevin says that he used to eat little pieces of paper okay with with liquid paper my friends and i put the names our beloved ones and correct okay so i think that that was like an amarre <laughs> that was not an addiction it was something that you wanted you know to protect people <laughs> okay it was kind of like witchcraft i think that's a very interesting story guys because the paper okay so i think it was witchcraft where we you were doing there a little bit of amarre i think so i agree um how do you guys think that some um, addictions can be, you know, not cure, but overcome? How can you overcome some addictions that are uh, making your life harder? How? Um, we have acupuncture. acupuncture. <laughs> uh, I've tried it when I, like, three years ago. I had a, a, I don't know how to call it, like a paralysis, I think, on my face. And yes, you are a witch, Kevin. Welcome to the club. <laughs> and I use acupuncture and it worked really good. It worked better than normal medicine. But I don't know if it was because of it or because I was just getting better. But, you know, I like to think that it was good. So probably if it works for that disease, it will probably work for addictions, but I'm not really sure how. Uh, the use of psychedelics. Okay, this is a very interesting topic. Actually, I think um, that we are going to have, or we need to have an episode on psychedelics because I 
am 100% pro psychedelics. Um, yes, that's how you get good in love. I love you guys. I think <laughs> you are the perfect couple. And if, if that worked for you, I'm so going to do it. <laughs> um, yes, psychedelics is um, like in micro doses, of course. Not, you know, you get a whole cuadro and then you get... No. Uh, in micro dose... In microdoses, it ha it can help you to have uh, a wider vision of yourself, and it probably resets your brain, according to some studios. So I think it, it's good. And uh, what about ayahuasca? Have you guys tried it? Have you guys done it? Because some people think that it's very helpful to have these, you know, experiences to overcome not only addictions but you know depression, things that are hard for you in your life or to make you have a wider, um, you know, view <laughs> of your life or yourself. So I think um, in my own knowledge, not experience because I haven't experienced it yet, but if you guys have experienced it, how did it go? I, I would like to know that. And mindfulness. Mindfulness is very on trend recently because a lot of people is doing like, you know, meditation and having this um, in your house some space for you to meditate in and to have these insightful uh, moments. So I, I think it can help, but as part as you know, as a part of therapy, but not by yourself, because you're not an expert. You need to contact an expert. And Gus says, I used to eat plant leaves till someone told me it's more probably to get tetanus from eating dirty plant leaves than getting pitched by something rusty. Oh my God, I didn't know that. I'm gonna look for it because I'm, I'm not sure how tetanus work, but I'm gonna look for it because it sounds interesting not yet yes i want to do it too if you want we can do it together sophie <laughs> because i think it, it will be a great experience if i personally a hundred percent pro psychedelics and psychodrama it in acting out scenes psychodramas it it can help you like to get a little bit of you know insightful but it's, um, I don't know, some people don't like it because it can be lonely and you need the help of a therapist, probably, to do most of these alternative remedies because um, you need someone who guides you through the whole experience. For example, in ayahuasca or in LSD, you know, you need someone who guides you or in magic mushrooms, I think, because um, it's not something that you can do for yourself because you need experience, because you need information, because you need um, a lot of factors that you, um, you need help. So we can do it together. Yes, gas is in. So we can do it all together and we can have like a good... Uh, mindfulness experience with ayahuasca or other any other psychedelics and i want you i want to leave you with one extra addiction that is altogether fucked up drugs drug addicts sniff their own poop in jail to get high that's a horrible fact i wish i hadn't read it I wish <laughs> I can't forget it now, but since I can't, I want you to leave you with that. If I heard it, you have to hear it too. I'm sorry. So um, that was it for today, you guys. I really hope that you can um, help me with your opinion. That you can tell me what do you think about this? What do you think? Uh, is missing how can we improve it of course i need you know a more quiet space <laughs> and um more time to get you know 
pretty on this but since it's my first time I want to thank you guys for your support and to be here and yes Jack you have a question tell us your question Would you rather drink pee or sniff? Oh my god. <laughs> it was such a bad idea to ask, to let me answer that question. Okay. Uh, I think I would rather drink pee 100%. I don't want any poo near me. You know? I want to pretend that that doesn't exist. <laughs> because it makes me really uncomfortable. So... I think I would rather drink pee at any circumstances beyond poop. What do you think? What do you guys think? Um, leave your comments here and thank you guys so much for being here. I miss you all. I really hope that we can see each other um, soon, <laughs> sometime. And um, thank you guys so much for being here and bye. I love you.